Another way to adjust blending modes is through layer effects or through the layer effects dialog box and there's actually a couple of ways within there. And so blending modes can also be applied via layer effects either within an effect like a drop shadow, bevel, or outer glow, or as a standalone objective using the blending options at the top of the layer effects dialog box. And so when you hit the FX button at the bottom of the layers panel, like in the example here, um, you have all the options that we've kind of previously talked about, drop shadow, stroke, bevel and emboss, etc. But the one at the top that people sometimes overlook is called blending options. And so when you choose blending options, you can choose how two elements would interact um, based on settings as opposed to just the entire layer. And so I have this image of these bricks here and I want to use it as a texture in the background, but maybe I want to make the text look like it's a little rough. And so in this example here, I have the, the word wow typed on the screen and I've chosen in my uh, drop down here from the FX tab at the bottom of the layers panel the blending options it's taken me to the effects dialog box it's the same dialog box you would get if you chose drop shadow but this time because I chose blending options I can work my way from the top to the bottom of the dialog box and kind of see what's available. And so when you choose the blending options, you can choose the blending mode, and that would work just like a layer would. And so if I change that drop down to darken, let's say, or to vivid light on the left here, you can see how the color red interacts with the color of the, the stones or the, the walkway beneath it. Another way to adjust this, and this is kind of my favorite option within the blending options, is to allow the, the colors in the, the layer that you're applying the blending mode to. In this case, I applied the blending mode to the WOW layer. I could allow the colors in the WOW to interact with the, the stones beneath um, using what is called a blend if option, and I kind of blew it up so you could see here. There's two options when you're blending if. And so basically you can say, blend if the layer that I'm applying it to, the wow layer, um, has certain intensity of color in it. Now I have a solid um, text, I have, it's just red. And so if I blend the layer, it'll either appear or not appear, because I will slide and say, when it gets to a certain saturation, make it disappear. But all the text is the same saturation, so once I get to the point where some of the text will disappear, it'll all disappear. But if you look at the background, the background has lots of different textures and colors. And so I have light areas and I have dark areas. And on the example here, I slid the, the light area from the right. It's all the way to the right saying, show me all of these colors. I slid it to the left slowly. And as I slide it more and more to the left, more and more of the lighter colors in the background will start to disappear and um, will start to show through the wow. And so you can see as I slid the, the light colors to the left, more and more of the light colors started to peer through the, the wow text and I'm getting rough texture. And so let me jump over to Photoshop and show you what I mean because I think it, it'll make more sense when we get over there. And so when we take our image, and so I have the same background, I kind of rotated it, and I'm going to try to create something cool and creepy for Halloween since I happen to be recording this video um, right around the time of Halloween. And so I have text, it's the same color as our, our slide. On the layers panel, I could change the layer blending mode and choose a blending mode that makes it look more creepy, but I'm going to do it via effects this time. And so with my Jeeper Creepers text layer selected, if I choose effects at the bottom and then blending options, I will get the layer styles dialog box and be able to make those same adjustments that I was talking about in the slideshow. And so you could choose to change the blending mode and do different things. You can lower the opacity and the change. I'm going to leave it at 100 or um, at normal. You can, you can do some other stuff under advanced blending. I'm going to skip over that, but I want to show you the blend if option because I think that's kind of where, where this blending option is most powerful. And so when you're blending, you can choose which colors to blend. I'm going to use gray because I think it's easier for right now because that represents density of color. If I slide on where it says this layer, if I slide the black slider to the right, uh, more and more of the image will start to disappear if there were tonal values. But can you see how nothing is disappearing? And right now I'm affecting the red text. Nothing is disappearing until it all disappears because at, let's see, at 54, um, all the red will appear and at 
55, it all disappears. So 55 must be the density of the color red. And so if the layer that you're applying these styles to is solid, that slider is not going to work. But watch what happens when I use the underlying layer, the background layer. Now as I slide the black slider to the right, you can see more and more of the underlying black color showing through the text. You can also slide the white sliders, and the same thing would happen on your text layer because it's solid. But now as I slide the white to the left, more and more of the lighter colors in the image are going to start showing through. Eventually it will eat through all of the text and you can't read it. But you could use this to create maybe roughed up text that looks like you have text on the side of a building that's been worn over time. And as I move it, you can kind of see I'm getting different textures. And so maybe I just want to do a little bit so it looks a little roughed up and then select OK. The benefit of applying this as a layer blending mode via the effects panel is the text is still fully editable. If I wanted to change this to say Happy Halloween, I could select the text and type Happy Halloween and then the effect that I have applied it still applies to the document so anywhere that is of that light value will still break through. Um, another thing that you can do, let's undo that. Another thing you can do is you can move the artwork on the page. And so if I decide that Jeepers Creepers should be at the bottom of the page, because I'm going to put something at the top of the page, as I move it, it still has the effect applied. It's not an instant effect or an instance of an effect right in this position. I can move it, and as I move it, the effect stays the same, and I just kind of reposition the artwork underneath. If we jump back to the slideshow, I'll show you some examples of what I created using this. And so when you have a blending mode, you can apply effects. So I added a stroke. I changed the blending mode of the text um, to overlay or something like that. I also applied a blending mode to the background layer to make it look creepy and kind of bloody and gory like it's from a horror movie. I did the same effect where I used a blending if option. And I combined all of those things in a non-destructive way to create one finished composition. Okay, I would like you to give layer blending modes a try within the effects dialog box. Specifically, I would like you to find a background that has textures and see if you can make the background eat away at the text that's in the foreground. Um, don't forget that when you use the type tool over here, you can click and drag to make a box that you can text, you can type inside. You don't have to do that though. You could probably, not probably, you definitely, you can just click if you want to. And if you just click, you can type, but you'll be able to type forever and you won't be constrained within the page. And so I would recommend making a text box, but it's not completely necessary. When you feel comfortable with this topic, you can move on to the next one. We'll talk about all the different transformations that are available to you via the edit menu in Photoshop.